Hello and shalom, beautiful people. Uh, today is September the 17th of 2024. I'm here again with the Lord. And I'm going to be obedient each time he have me to come on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jump right into it. I pray that this blesses those who is for. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this day. I thank you, Lord, and I humble myself. And with gratitude, I just want to thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a vessel. I pray, Lord, that, that you reach the heart of your people where they need to be touched. That you renew, rekindle, revitalize, revive, restore. Every nook and cranny of your children, Father, where they have grown tired due to the long process of enduring. Lord, the process you've set in place to bring forth the manifestation of your promises that you might receive the glory with the key of David. And by the sound of my voice, I boldly and faithfully, Lord, believing that the words that come out of my mouth are powerful. Let the Holy Spirit speak through me. I place the cloak of invisibility over our minds, body, spirit, and heart. I seal us all in Holy Shine's blood. Amen. So y'all, hopefully this won't be a long video. I don't mean to make it a long video. I want to come to y'all because I'm continuing my reading in Revelation. I'm in chapter 2 this morning. And as you can see from the title, it says, Love Jesus the way you did in the beginning. He keeps having me share that the end is the beginning. And the beginning is the end. And some things he's taken us back in time to do a redo. And part of that redo is some of his children renewing their first love with him. Going back to doing the things, the basic foundational, fundamental things that you did in the beginning when you were hungry for the Lord, when you were thirsting after him and you knew that no matter what, you were doing these things because you wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. You wanted to have his peace. You wanted to hear from him. You just wanted to be in right relationship. You wanted to be in alignment with him. And everything that you felt at that moment is absolutely where he wants us to be throughout the endurance of our walk. But it gets heavy because as you answer the call, then comes the trials, then comes the tests, here comes the tribulations, here comes everything. And each of us have to go through different processes in our walk. And sometimes we get to a point in our walk to where it just seems so heavy. Like, okay, God, like, I'm tired. I'm tired. And <laughs> that is why he's having me come on today. Because this is more of a word of encouragement, not a chastening or not for people. You got to get what you know. Uh -uh. It's not what he's doing. He's saying he's encouraging his body because he knows his children are tired. He also knows what he put in us, though. He knows how resilient we are, how much we can endure. He knows exactly what it takes to get us where we need to be. And it's by his strength and his strength alone that we're going to get to that, that expected end. So, I'll start where I was reading, okay? Revelation chapter 2, the church in Ephesus, or Ephesus, I'm sorry. Unto the angel of the church of or it might be Ephesus, I don't know. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars and has borne which means you have persevered we're going to remember that word and has patience and for my name's sake 
has labored and has not fainted. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and, not, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. But thou hast, excuse me, but this thou hast, that thou hast the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So we're going to break this down real quick, as, as quickly as I can. The church of Ephesus was known for persevering. Persevering. Okay? The Lord says, I know thy works, because he has seen your works. He has seen the work that you've put in for him. He has seen your constant steadfastness, your endurance, your commitment, your bold confidence to do the things that he's asked you to do without relent. He has seen it. He has watched you push through. Thy labor and thy patience. Of course, your labor is what you put your hands to. God has seen that you've answered the call. He's seen that you have answered the call. And you continue to answer the call. Even in little strength. Which has produced your patience. Because the Lord has given you. Not only the promises of his word. But he's given you personal promises. That he has said are going to come to pass. And you're not doing this just so it can come to pass. You're doing this because. You love the Lord. You understand your purpose. You understand your calling. And you want to please him. You want to be in right standing, in right covenant, in right relationship with him. Because it says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. You have already your heart, your heart posture. That's where you begin. And that is what you have based your works, your labor on. And it has caused you to learn how to be patient with the Lord. But... I'm going to skip around. I'm going to go back to different parts of these verses. The Lord said, you haven't fainted, but you have grown weary. And he says to return to your first love. Go back to where you first began. And that's why he wanted me to come on and give encouragement. Okay, let me go here. I'm be obedient. <laughs> he wants me to expound on the word perseverance. It means, perseverance means to, to continue in a course of action. And even in the face of difficulty or in uh, what it says, with little or no prospect of success. This is where most of his children are finding themselves in right now. The Lord has called you to something. You've been obedient. You've been putting forth the work. You've done labor. Whether that's been yielding your body to fasting, praying, um, speaking forth what the Lord has given you to speak. Giving a word to somebody when the Lord has given it to you. He has assigned you to a certain person or a group of people. You've been doing those things in obedience. And yet you feel like you are not producing nothing. It feels like there is no success. That no matter how much you do. No matter how <laughs> faithful you are. No matter how zealous you are for the Lord. And no matter how much you have endured. It don't seem like it's doing anything and this can cause a person to grow weary. Perseverance can cause you to grow weary, which means you become tired. You start to grow reluctant of, um, you just start to grow reluctant in things, okay? The process sometimes becomes burdensome. You become weak and, and you begin to, to fail in heart. And you lose your confidence. Your faith starts to 
to crack, right? And the Lord is saying, renew the things that you were doing in the beginning to get his attention. And I'm going to be obedient to say what he just put on my heart. This may require you to fast. Because even at your weakest moment, sometimes we don't want to fast. But you might even have grown weary with fasting. And the Lord is saying, try it again. I want to expound on why you should try again. Because we are in the season of birthing. A lot of us, us, not you us the lord has been gracing us and carrying us through this process of developing this spiritual baby which is birthing forth your purpose birthing forth a ministry and everything that's attached to it restoration of family of marriages uh businesses coming forth restoration of your mind the lord is setting your mind in alignment with his will and with his process with his with his the way that he has found it for you to walk the path that he has set for you to walk for you to get where you need to be the lord has set this up and you've been doing that he has given you divine instruction to let you know how to answer certain scenarios how to conduct yourself to hold your composure or when to speak up how to respond to the situations that are being put before you as testing of your faith to try you in the furnace. You've done it, okay? The Lord says you have not fainted yet, but you've grown weary. And so I want to read the, what he gave me from Galatians. And I know this is something that we hear all the time. And sometimes when we start hearing these scriptures, you know, we might somebody might run across this word and you were just completely exhausted. You don't want to hear it. Okay? Just remember that the word of God is quick and powerful. Okay? Sharper than any two-edged sword and it pierces even unto the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and down to the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. And it is also, the word of God is alive and it is active. And just when you think it won't work, when you've heard it too much, he can step in and cause that little thing, that little, that one scripture to be a defining moment and a turnaround, a place of, of, of pivot for you. So this is Galatians 6 and 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And listen, this is due season. A lot of spiritual babies are due and long overdue because there's been delay. And God has allowed it to happen because he knows the necessary time that we need for pruning. He knows the amount of time that we need in order for him to process us so that we will be ripe when it is time for the harvest. Okay? So... He wants to encourage somebody today to return back to those things that you were first doing. And I know the process has been hard. I know that you're waiting to be vindicated. I know that you're waiting for the Lord to step in to clear your name or to heal your heart or to show you, you know, endow you with more love or whatever it is that you are needing the Lord to do to get you through this birthing, to push this baby out. He wants you to, you're in a place, you're at the right place at the right time right now to take yourself back to where you began so that the Lord can renew you in him because it's only through him that you're going to get to the finished part of this season so that you can transition into uh, this is a transition phase actually because when you're, when you're birthing a baby, that baby is transitioning from the dimension that it's in with within your womb coming from your coming from the womb and into this earthly realm is what I'm trying to say that is the point of transition when the birthing process is happening and that's literally where we are right now you're in the right place at the right time and the Lord wants to renew your faith today he wants to renew your spirit, renew your mind, renew your strength, and give you a fresh starting point. 
So I want to read from Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to, through 5. And this is one too that may sound redundant, but there's so much power in it. Because this literally describes the process that we go through. And it yields much fruit. Even in our darkest moments when it feels that nothing is working. And not only so, we glory in tribulations. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. So you can't have a testimony if you don't have experience. And if you don't have patience, it's hard to walk with the Lord. He teaches us so that we don't give up so easily. That we don't throw in the towel when, when the word of God tells us in Ephesians 6. You know, that we would, may be able to withstand in, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, when we have to stand against the wiles of the devil, we don't give in. As easy as our adversary may want us to. Okay? So patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us from when we are yet we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly there's words that the Lord keeps repeating in due season due time hearts patience these are hard words. Perseverance. Because in a moment, because I know that I've been in, in moments where the Lord has brought something to across my feed that he wanted me to watch. And I heard, I'm like, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear another word. I want to see it. You know, I don't want to hear another word. Not that you don't want to hear words of encouragement, but you're like, I've heard this so many times. When is it going to happen? And what we have to understand is we are in the Lord's kairos timing on everything there is a due season for everything and right now you're at the point of pushing this baby out this is birthing time you're pushing this baby out and as i'm mentioning this we are in the month of september which is very significant every year because it is the month of elul on the father's calendar and it is a and it represents birthing it represents the, this the new beginnings that the Lord is trying to get through, get through to us by He's saying the first is the last, the last is the first, the beginning is the end, the end the beginning. There are cycles that we have to go through for preparation of a new season, and after we have completed those cycles, and it's funny because I just read Romans five verses three through five, and if you look up five thirty five in the Strong Concordance, Strong's Concordance, it means to complete, to finish. This process. For some, not for all, you need to know your season. And you only know that by being in relationship with the Lord. I can't tell you if it's your season. I know what mine is. And the Lord said, it is finished. This season of tribulation and trial that you have had to be processed for, to build you up, to be able to take on what is coming in this next season so that you can take over your inheritance in the kingdom in this next season. This process of hardness, it is, and it has come to an end because these things manifest spiritually. But it's up to us to put forth that work in the natural so that Father can bring forth that manifestation in his Kairos timing. And I know that we can't, we can't, we can fast to do things, right? Fast in order, because the scriptures tell us that some things only come out. Jesus said this kind only come out by praying and fasting. If it's healing that is blocking you from pushing the baby out. If it is unforgiveness in heart that is causing a person to not be able to push out this baby. If it is, you know, if there's envy or strife somewhere within your heart about a thing. These are things that we have to lay down. And we have to return back to the foundational things. That's why he's saying the end is the beginning. Because where you started, okay... Is where you need to return to, to renew and revive your first love. So I want to say a quick prayer for the person or the people that's listening to this video, for the areas in your life that have grown stale and you just feel like, I'm tired and I don't want to keep doing this no more. I love the Lord with all my heart, yet I'm so tired and I'm so weary that I don't feel like I can go another day. I want to pray for you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, I lift up my hands before you and I lift up my prayer as a sweet smelling incense before you, before your throne. May you hear it and receive it, Father, with the faith that I have, what you've given me to pray, what you have given me, Father, to speak out of my mouth, Heavenly Father, with the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I decree in the mighty throne, in the mighty courts of heaven today. That my brother, my sister, who is listening to this video, Father, that they be renewed from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. That the Holy Spirit, as I pray this prayer, that the Holy Spirit will enter into their dwelling place, wherever they are, Heavenly Father. And begin, Heavenly Father, to extract from them whatever is keeping them, Lord, from being strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I pray that whatever has grown stale, the things that were of value in the beginning, the things that you laid as precious gold, as a foundation of pearls and nuggets for them to hold on to in their walk, where the enemy has tried to beat them down, God, to where they want to give up and just throw in the towel, where the enemy has come in to deceive with lies, to kill, steal, and destroy. In the mighty matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I plead the blood and I pour the blood of the Lamb all over them right now in every part of their life and being. May the devil be proven to be a liar. May you throw out his plans over their life right now today. May you blot out their sin and their iniquity and forgive them Lord where they may have fallen short your word says that the just man falleth seven times and riseth again but the wicked fall into mischief I decree according to Job 22 and 28 right now that the person on the other end of this video that they will rise again Father and that the wicked adversary the devil the one common enemy we all have and he has his minions too everything that is attached to him that it will fall into mischief that you will make him a liar. That you will be proven true and, and, and every man a liar. Whatever facade that we have built up, whatever expectation that we have come to put together in our mind that you didn't give us, Lord. Teach us how to be expecting of you and not set an expectation of our own. Help us to balance that, Father. Help us to align with you. When you tell us to trust and believe in your promises and we start to be in expectation, Lord, and that expectation starts to venture and grow into something that we start to define in our own mind and in our spirit. I ask that you keep us, Lord, in alignment. Don't let us cross the threshold, Lord, where we start to build our own imagination of what you said would happen. Teach us how to rest in your process. Teach us how to rest, Lord. In the way that you want these things to be done so that they can come to pass the way you have already ordained for them to come to pass. Help us to know how to move on your Kairos timing as you have told us to move. And as we grow weary in our moments, may the strength of the Lord, may Jesus Christ himself, Yeshua HaMashiach and the Holy Spirit come in as a, a rushing wind to renew us, to fill us, to revive us. Where our cup has become empty and dry. Let the rivers of living water pour into us and overflow. May you send us into overflow in this moment, God. Where we feel like this is the end and this is it. We can't do it no more. We tried it. We've waited. We've been patient. You don't owe us anything. I want to speak for myself. But God, when you speak a promise... And I say speak for myself because I can only speak for myself in saying that he don't owe us anything because I've come to realize that you don't owe us anything. But you have said that these are the things that are ours. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to move mightily for us. And we've held on to that. We believe that. And in places we've grown weary. I pray right now that that stillness, Father, becomes a fresh renewal and anointing. If you're calling some of your people to fast, I ask that you bring them to that place of surrender to you. That they may come to the point of submission unto you. And do the thing that they need to do to renew their relationship with you. And when they come out on the other side, that they will be revived. Lord, that they will be rekindled even in the midst of the fast or 
whatever you call them to do to draw near to you, Father. May they surrender their bodies as a vessel to you, as a sweet offering of sacrifice and incense so that when they come before you, they will be renewed as if that weariness never took place. I decree it to be so because you are a God of faithfulness. And I speak this from experience because he has done it for me. Call me to do fast and things in moments where I felt like I was just depleted and didn't have nothing left. And in the midst of it, he renewed me to feel like I wasn't even fasting. Shifted my mindset for me to not even worry about the things that I normally worry about when I'm having to go through a moment of fasting and prayer with the Lord. Father, strengthen their prayers. Strengthen their prayers in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer. I seal it in the blood of the Lamb, and I love you, and I thank you for the precious Lamb of God that has redeemed us and renewed us because of his shed blood and his love for you and his willingness to do your will. This is my prayer in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Shalom and be blessed, y'all.